Hello and welcome. I'm Zach Parrish with Epic Games, and today we're going to take a look at some of the tools and features available for Unreal Engine 4, which is ready for download right now. We're going to start by creating a really simple environment just to show off how easy it is to make worlds in UE4. I'll begin by bringing in a little bit of geometry. Now this is not exactly right in terms of size for our purposes, so I'm going to scale it down really quickly. And let's snap it right down to the floor. I'll frame the camera up on it, and we have a nice solid block. Now we're going to carve out of that. So I'll make a duplicate, and let's make that duplicate subtractive. Now I'm going to resize this, let's say to 480, we'll do about 3 meters tall. And then with just a little bit of adjustment, I can align this with our original surface and create a nice two-walled set with a floor and a ceiling. It'd be cool if this had a door. So let's take that negative shape, we'll duplicate it, and let's see here, let's make it wall thickness, 150 by about 250. Seems to be pretty good door height. We'll hit end, and I'll just sink this into the back wall. There we go. And just like that, I get a nice clean doorway, which if I wanted to, I could reposition. Now the materials on this are fairly drab, just having this uh, default material in here. So I'll select one of the back walls, and we'll run a quick algorithm to select all of the adjacent walls. And then here in my content browser, I can drag out a brick material. And you see how that quickly gets applied to all of the wall surfaces. Uh, let's put something on the ceiling, and let's add a hardwood floor material down on the floor, which I'll quickly rotate 45 degrees just because it looks nice. Now some decorations would be good, so let's see, let's bring in a table, and I'll bring in a chair, rotate that slightly, let's bring in another chair, there we go, and some lighting would be nice, so I've got a ceiling lamp that I can bring in. Now this is not a mesh, this was actually created with our blueprint system, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Essentially that means it has some in-game behavior already set up for it, so I can toggle it on and it starts illuminating my scene. I'll tap G to go into game mode and hide out those unnecessary sprites, so we can see how that looks. I can also take this light and make a duplicate of it, and part of its blueprint script means that I can toggle its type to a floor lamp. So this one asset can serve multiple purposes. We can tap the end key, and then I'll just drag that over into the corner. Now uh, let's fill in our doorway with a door. So I've got another blueprint that I can bring in like so. Now because this is a blueprint, it's more than just a static mesh door. If I hit play and just jump right into the game, you can see that the door automatically opens. And it works from both directions because it was already scripted to do that. Now the next part of my demonstration has to do with materials. In Unreal Engine 4, we use what are called physically based materials. This means we define our materials using physical terms just as you would in the real world. So here, I can control the base color of this material. And you see that controls how light is absorbed. Next, we have roughness. Now this controls how rough the surface is at the macroscopic level, which is a really fancy way of saying it controls how shiny it is. So you see with the low roughness value, the surface is very shiny. As I increase roughness, it becomes much more dull. Next we can also control how metallic a surface is. So here we have a metallic value of zero, so we have what looks like shiny plastic. As I increase the metallic value, you see we blend over to something much more like chrome. And we can always do more. Next door we have these two materials which are a bit more complex and are actually disrupting their surface or perturbing the surface of their geometry. So let's uh, take a look at these in wireframe and you can actually see those vertices being perturbed. Now materials can also take in inputs from cameras in the scene. So here there's a camera looking at those two previous materials and then broadcasting that into this material to look like a holographic display. Next to this, we have an example of how we can take a scene, load it into a material, and then manipulate it, in this case to make kind of a high-tech world, as you see here. This material is wiping back and forth between the actual scene and one of the many buffers that our rendering engine uses to draw everything. In this case, we're taking a look at the uh, roughness buffer, which is how shiny objects are in the level. Materials can also be used as layers. So here we see five rockets. The four small ones each have their own individual material types. We have aluminum, and then chrome, and then copper, and then red plastic. 
while the large rocket in the center is using all four of those as layers to cover its surface. We can also combine material types. So here we have a material with masked opacity and two different material types along with some animation. And you can see how that masked opacity is blending seamlessly into the scene and shadowing properly. Here we've actually blended water and metal together to create a bit of a complex surface with a tremendous amount of detail. If I select this, I can actually open this up in the Material Instance Editor, and we can make changes to the color of the surface that update in the editor in real time. Or if we wanted to make a change to the actual behavior of the base material, we could open up the parent and make any changes we wanted to its graph network. Now, materials can also respond to in-game events. So here, I have three materials being ice, wood, and metal. And I can throw fire at each one. And they will each respond accordingly in their own way. So you see the water, or the ice melts. Of course, the wood starts to burn. And the metal gets cherry hot. Then I can splash them with water and get an entirely different response that blends in perfectly. Now let's talk about blueprints. Blueprints are our visual scripting system in Unreal Engine 4. Now earlier, I was using Play in Editor. I'm actually going to jump out of that now, and we're going to simulate in Editor. That means that the game is playing while we remain behind, able to still select and work with objects. So I'll select this bouncing ball, and we'll open up its blueprint graph. Here we can see what is called a timeline driving the animation of that ball and moving it up and down. And each time it strikes the ground, we're calling this node at the bottom, which is spawning the ripple effect that you see. I can right click on that node and add a breakpoint. And the next time that node executes, it halts playback and jumps me right to that location, which makes it very easy for us to debug these graphs later on. We'll go ahead and remove that breakpoint. And I'll click resume, and we can continue on. Now, blueprints are not just for things that move around in your scenes. We can also use them to create powerful level design tools. So here we have a steel railing that has a variable length. I can increase the length, like so. And that length is independent for each instance of the blueprint. So I can make a copy of it, and I can lower that length, or make another copy of it, and rotate it, and change that length. And you can see how very quickly I can make multiple copies or multiple instances of this blueprint and populate my world. Now, blueprints can also communicate with one another. So here, I have three different blueprints. I have a button, a light, and some gears. Now, when I step on the button, you'll see that these gears start turning. That's because they have actually been told to communicate directly with the button. Or I guess specifically the button's been told to communicate with them. Now, I'm going to jump out of the, the game. We'll select the button. Now I'm going to tell it to communicate with the light bulb instead. I'll hit play. And the next time I step on the button, the light bulb lights up, but the gears remain stationary. Now we can also create AI-style networks within Blueprints. So here, if I hit simulate, we've got this little butterfly who's just flying around, minding his own business. He actually flies around, expels energy. He'll get tired, and then he'll uh, actually halt and try to rest. Let's pause the game. I'll select him and open up his blueprint graph. And this graph is actually fairly expensive. Let's go ahead and resume the game. And it's a little far away, but we can actually see all of his decisions cycling through his graph as he decides to take off in another direction, as he decides to sit down and rest. So if we zoom in here on this one aspect of the network, this is just controlling his animated material. Every time that material needs to change, we can watch that code execute in real time while the game is playing back over in the editor. Now to really drive this home, I have some games that were created entirely within the Blueprint system. And you'll note that these are kind of like games within games. I can walk up to this button, and we start playing this little Galaga-style shooter that is completely contained within our level. Let's jump out of that. Now behind me, I've got another game. You see this little UFO. When I step on the button, we take over the UFO, my camera changes, and my controls become different. So now I can fly this little guy around, and I can abduct these little toy cows that you see, and eject them into their little pen. 
Now, this UFO was also created with the Blueprint system, so I'm going to show that off real quick. Let's actually jump out of the game for just a moment. I'm going to hit eject. Now, the game continues playing, it's just I'm not controlling anything. So I can select our little UFO, and we can open up its Blueprint graph, and here's everything that is going on with just that UFO. I'm going to zoom in on this one network over here. And this is all of the things that control its little abduction beam. And you can see they're quite extensive. There's things for when we activate the beam, deactivate it, when it actually sucks up one of the other objects. Let's zoom in on just the on and off sequence, just to make that really easy to see. And I'll adjust my UI slightly, so we can see that a little more clearly. Now with the UFO selected, I'll just repossess him, and I can continue playing just like nothing ever happened. So now, as I activate the beam, you can watch that code update and execute during playback. And Blueprints made this possible for just a couple of artists to put these together. Both of the games you see here were really just the effort of one to two artists and required no programmers whatsoever. And the best part is these are not all individual disparate parts. We can take our UFO and fly it back to the scene and still see everything working. fly back through all of our materials, even go back and explore that little environment that we made. And everything just works, and it's interactive. And of course, we all like blowing things up, so as a finale, let's just fly into this logo. And you can see that that's a destructible mesh. So now that you've seen a nice selection of tools and techniques for Unreal Engine 4, let's show you what a small team can accomplish with it. So this was a little project put together by just a few of our artists in their spare time. Now here we are in the editor. I'm actually going to hit play and leave this in the editor. So that wraps up this demonstration. Remember, Unreal Engine 4 is available right now for download, $19 a month plus 5% of your gross if you ship a title. Thanks very much for your time, and we hope to see you around.